In this video, we will demonstrate some useful facts about pole zero plots. You will learn how to read pole zero plots and also learn how to use them to design simple filters. Pole zero plots can be used to visualize certain aspects of digital audio filters, so you can see how your output signal will relate to the input signal. In more precise terms, they are used to illustrate the characteristics of a linear time invariant system that can be represented by a rational transfer function. The transfer functions have this form. This has a direct correspondence to a differential equation. As long as you have this differential equation form, you can implement it as the following. x is the input, y is the output, and n is the index of both terms. So what are zeros and poles? The zeros of this equation are the values for z that make the numerator equal to zero. So they make our transfer function equal to zero. The poles are the roots of the polynomial in the denominator. If we draw the zeros and poles on a complex plane, it will look like this. This is a pole zero plot. It is a unit circle placed in the complex plane. The location of our zeros are represented by zeros, and the location of our poles are represented by x's. Why do we have a unit circle here? A point on the unit circle represents the normalized frequency of the input signal, which has a range of negative pi to pi. This is mapped from zero to half the sampling frequency. So a given input frequency is written as a polar angle from the x-axis. We can use the combination of our input frequency and the location of the poles and zeros to learn things about our transfer function, such as the frequency response. The frequency response tells you what the output magnitude and phase of your system will be for a given input frequency. Roughly, the magnitude tells you how much a given frequency will be boosted or attenuated after passing through your system. Say we want to determine the magnitude response of frequency z for a filter h, and we are given this pole zero plot. We start by connecting some vectors from our zeros and poles to the frequency point on the unit circle. With these vectors, the magnitude response can be calculated using this equation. The phase response can be calculated with this equation. A more intuitive way to think about this is that you can imagine the z-plane as a piece of silk. When you pinch the silk and pull it up, you create a pole. When you pinch the silk and pull it down, you have a zero. The tension on the unit circle at a given frequency corresponds to the magnitude of your output for that frequency.